lot of people consider private pay to be your facilities and your out of pocket, but I broke mine down much further than that. So I actually have a 33% split across the board, which I love not having all my eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. There's so many companies that will just work with brokers. So I have 33% brokers, 33% is my facilities and my hospitals, and then 33% is self pay, where they pay me with cash or a credit card every day. So I love the diversity of my clients. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Zenpath Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Son. I'm sitting down with Marina, owner of Crown Care Transport from Spring Hill, Florida. We have a jam-packed interview for you today. Tons of information, so you're not going to miss this one. Um, so get your coffee, you know, get situated, relax a bit. Um, you know, uh, we've been doing this uh, podcast since, I believe it was since February. Um, and already we have over 700 subscribers. Um, over 30,000 hours watched and over 150 NEMT companies signed up with our software. Um, you guys are amazing. Um, you know, without you guys' support, we would not be able to do this. Um, today, we're going to be discussing everything from hiring to elderly mental health um, and answering a lot of you guys' comments, questions. Um, so um, please subscribe um, and hit the like button. It really helps us out with the algorithm. Um, if you are an NMT vet and you are in the industry and you've been in the industry for a while, or if you're a new NMT company, you're gonna to wanna to do two things, two things. You're gonna to wanna to watch this interview. Um, and the second thing you wanna do is sign up for our free dispatch software. Zenpath is, uh, Zenpath is our new NMT dispatch software that allows you to customize, schedule, and keep in touch, keep records of all your trips all in one place. Um, writing down schedules down, writing schedules down on hand, um, on paper, uh, using overpriced, outdated software is no longer an excuse. Um, come on, it's 2022. It's 2022. Um, we're releasing new features by the week, and guess what? Zenpath is 100% free and forever. Um, so um, already we have over 150 NMT companies using Zenpath. Um, let's make it 151 by our next interview. Um, if you're interested in trying out our software, we will put the link in the comments below. Sign up. Let us know what you think. Um, so without further ado, Marina, welcome to Zenpath Radio. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So you're in Spring Hill. How close are you? How well, how far are you? Or no, how close are you from Tampa? I'm about 45 minutes north of Tampa. That's really close. Do you go there yeah. pretty often or? Oh, all the time. There's a nice little expressway about five minutes from my house, and I just jump on there and it's smooth sailing down to Tampa. <laughs> awesome. That's like the, yeah. the off days, right? Yes. You get the rat lax and then come back kind of motivated and uh, yeah, energized, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So uh, we're going to uh, go into some um, common questions that uh, we've been receiving in the comments. Um, okay. All right. So let's start off with the first one. Um, the first one is from someone named uh, Shayla. Shayla uh, Ransaw. Um, she said, which type of vans do you prefer, uh, side ramp or back ramp? This is a super personal question, but mm -hmm. I definitely prefer a rear loading ramp. Mm -hmm. That way you can unload anywhere you go. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, getting into the perfect parking spot to be able to put down your side ramp. Now, I think most providers are going to tell you rear entry is the way to go, especially when you're moving into the caravans. You can also load a stretcher into the caravan. So I highly, highly recommend a rear load van. Uh, it's just a little bit easier. It makes your job a little bit easier. Huh? So much easier. Yes. When it comes to parking, loading, everything, rear loads the way to go. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, so uh, Marvisly made, uh, she asks, uh, what steps did you take in terms of researching um, your area to see if any the NEMT business would be a viable business in your area? This is a great question because a lot of providers will go into an area that's oversaturated. Um, for this, I actually had to do a business plan because I did receive some financing. So mm -hmm. when I was creating my business plan, not only did I reach out to other providers in my area to see what they're charging, to see how booked they are. And obviously I didn't tell them I'm starting a company, but seeing what their scheduling's like. Um, I also looked up the demographics for the area that I'm in and I'm in a area where our population is like 60% 55 and over and then it goes up to like 45% for 65 and over so the community that I'm in has a bunch of elderly and then I also reached out to some of my nursing home and my assisted living facilities and seeing if they had transportation or what was their experience like with their transportation providers so I really reached out to everybody and they basically said like, 
we don't have anyone, we don't have a bus driver, our transportation never shows up. So I knew there was a huge demand in this area. And then also when I was reaching out to brokers, they told me the county that I'm in is the only county they're contracting for. Awesome. So before Sounds I got like you started, did, you did your due I, diligence. You did the yes. work and you actually put in the, the effort to do a lot of research, it seems Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Um, you, you mentioned, I mean, we could talk more about this in the, in the actual interview, but you mentioned that it took a while, you know, from uh, idea to getting your first client, right? Because of the, the work that it took to do research, yes. right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to answer two, we're going to ask two more questions. Um, and then at the end of closer to the end, we're going to ask uh, some more uh, questions. Okay. Um, so uh, cute DR cute DR 0817 asks, what's the best way to get private pay uh, customers? This is a question that I get so often, and I truly believe it comes down to marketing. It has a lot to do with networking. Um, most of my business comes from networking. It comes from not only am I an owner, but I'm also an operator. So I'm out in the field. I'm meeting not only the nurses, but the administration, your caseworkers, at not only your rehab centers, but your nursing homes. Um, I go into the hospitals. I meet those case managers. I talk to them. They like having that face-to-name relationship. Um, and when I really started out, I went in and just, you know, take them some snacks, take them food, introduce yourself, leave some cards, and then go back and follow up with them. And really that name-to-face recognition, they're like, oh, hey, let's, let's call Marina. You know, she was great. She was here. They know I show up on time, but marketing is just so essential. And a lot of people overthink marketing too. They think that they have to go spend a bunch of money on, you know, door hangers or flyers or posters. And that's not necessary. Just get out into your community and meet people. Yeah. It's, it's all about like, uh, just, just being present, right? Yes. Um, absolutely. not hiding, you know, you know, it, it, it is one thing like hiding behind the screen, right. And not getting out there. Right. But it's another, yes. it's taking another, a whole nother game to actually get out there and actually start shaking hands a little bit, showing your face. hundred percent. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so uh, the last one, uh, let's see. Uh, we have another one from Marvelously Made. Um, is there is there anything that you would do differently to set yourself apart from other NMT providers in your area? The thing that I did to set myself apart was mm -hmm. show up and show up on time and have quality vehicles. It is definitely worth it to spend a little bit of extra money to have the proper vehicles, to have wheelchairs uh, or wheelchair vehicles with the proper size ramp. Make sure you're able to accommodate everybody. Make sure you're able to accommodate those bariatric wheelchairs. And the biggest part is just showing up and showing up on time. Talking to all my clients, especially when I first started, they're like, wow, you're on time. You actually showed up. I didn't miss my appointments. That was the best thing that I ever started doing from the beginning. And really the way that you show up and show up on time, your drivers are only as good as your dispatcher. So you have to make sure that when you're planning your route, you're leaving enough time for everybody to get picked up and to get picked up on time. So it's a team, it's a team effort. It's not just Absolutely. like a one person kind of thing. It's not just a driver, you know, going above and beyond. It takes the dispatcher, it takes the Absolutely. operator, it takes everyone to work together as a unit, right? Absolutely. Provide a great service. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's great. That's great. Great answers. Great answers. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's dive into some questions, Marina. <laughs> Are you okay. ready? <laughs> yes, I'm ready. Awesome. All right. So uh, what actually, what inspired you uh, to start your NEMT business? So my NEMT, NEMT business is super personal. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in college, I have a degree in healthcare administration. I was working at a doctor's office. And at that time, myself and my family had moved about three hours north of where my grandparents were. Yeah. My grandma was diagnosed with lung cancer and she had all kinds of other health concerns as well. And she started using transport. Um, it was a pretty regular basis that my mom and I would get phone calls from my grandma saying they didn't show up or they didn't show up on time or she didn't like the sketchy taxi driver that showed up to get her. <laughs> and I just started asking around and doing my research and figuring out why are they not showing up? Why are they showing up late? And 
I mean, it just turns out there's not enough providers. It is a very expensive business to get into. It's a long process to do everything right. It's expensive. Um, it's kind of political to get into. You have to know the right people to reach out to. You have to know when to follow up. You have to have a good relationship with these um, onboarding people if you're going to work with the brokers, or you have to know how to get out and market if you're aiming for your private pay. So, I mean, transport for me is super personal. Once I started the process until the end, my grandma actually passed away about six months before I took my first customer. And I always think back now is maybe if transport showed up and she got to all of her cancer treatments, maybe she'd still be here. So I don't want anyone else to have to deal with the experience that I did. Definitely understood. Yeah, I read the article. Um, that's actually how I, I, I found you. You know, I read, a, um, I forgot what news article it was, but it was an article about, you know, the interview where you discussed, you know, your frustration with um, drivers showing up, you know, tardy and kind of like kind of abandoning, abandoning uh, their, 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 their clients. So it yes. seems like this is a big problem in this industry. And I've heard this quite, quite often. Um, so driving now, do you still see this kind of like phenomenon happening? Absolutely. That is the biggest complaint from my clients and mm. even new clients that I obtain all the time. I, I can't tell you how often I get calls from not only clients, but also their family saying, we really appreciate you making sure mom or dad or grandpa get to their appointments on time. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have gone above and beyond compared to any other company. And I mean, I, I appreciate the compliments. It really makes those bad days worth it, but I hear about it so often. Wow, so, wow. Often. so, you know, is late arrival, is that a driver dispatch or is it a business error? Like where, where does the error lie? So I always tell my drivers and I have a couple of people that I'm training to do dispatch, but I also do dispatch most of the time, but your drivers are only as good as the dispatcher. And that is absolutely the truth. If your dispatcher is just throwing on a bunch of appointments at the same time, not actually looking at the area that the driver needs to be going. So I'm, and I can't tell you how many other drivers I've hired that work for other companies. And they tell me they'll, the dispatcher will have them driving all over the place, give them a 45 minute window, but it's an hour and a half drive, or they'll give them four people at the same time. And, you know, they're 10 miles apart. So it really comes down to the driver, making sure that they're on time, making sure that we're calling our patients to make sure they're ready when we get there. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Weather, traffic, vehicle breakdowns. There are so many things that go into making sure you're on time. Yeah. So, so the, the is the key like leaving a, like an empty window in between each trip? Because I was going to ask you, you know, like what does the solution look like? You know, uh, you know, um, without falling behind on your daily schedule, right? Like if something were to happen, right? Maybe like a flat tire or maybe it's, um, you know, like, I mean, anything can happen on the road, right? You know, you know, unfortunate, unfortunately, an accident, right? That can happen. Yes. Um, so in those emergency situations, how do you avoid, you know, falling behind in your schedule and like having that trickle effect? With so the, with each client? the biggest thing is have more vehicles. Because when mm -hmm. I first started out, I only had two. And when you have one go down, there's no way to catch back up. And that was a problem I had because I bought one used van and it was not the most reliable. So when you have a schedule booked for two full people, and you have one van that, you know, has a flat tire, blows a transmission, whatever, there's no way to catch back up. So now that I have more vehicles, that's much more manageable. Um, but the biggest recommendation is make sure you leave buffer time. I leave two probably 30 minute to 45 minute buffers throughout each of my driver schedule throughout the day, because when they start running late, then they have that buffer to catch back up. And I mean, we deal with a bunch of patients that are going to appointments and they don't know when they're going to be done. So then you have all your will calls start calling at the same time. So you have to leave that buffer time. Do you think a great solution would be to have like, uh, like a percentage system with different vans, right? So such as if you have three vans, right? Let's say if you have like, uh, you know, maybe one running like 50% of the time, the other one running maybe 30 and the other one running 20% of the time. And the 20% of the time is like that, like 
that one that can like kind of like fill in gaps right so like that emergency kind of vehicle and maybe not making enough a lot of money in, but like, in in theory it sounds great but with the price of our insurance it does not work so we do have to make sure that we're full and all of the vans are running so that's why i leave myself the buffer time mm -hmm. um i wish we could afford to have that extra <laughs> van that can just jump in and go help anybody but i mean in reality the best thing i've figured out financially you know, make sure we're making enough money and to make sure our clients on time is just to leave the buffer. Personally, that's what work for me. I know everyone has a different uh, tactic, but for me, it's just the buffer time. Understood, under, understood. So Marina, how many drivers do you currently uh, have? And like, yeah, what percentage of your employees are drivers? Um, right now, 100% of us are drivers. Mm -hmm. I also do everything else. And then I have one other employee who's learning dispatch right now to kind of take some weight off of me. Mm -hmm. um, but right now there are seven of us who drive and that's a mix of part-time and full-time drivers. Okay. What has been your experience of finding quality drivers? So my, if you can get them to show up to an interview, that's a great start because <laughs> right now you can't even do that. <laughs> But the biggest thing that I look for is a driver that comes into this business with compassion because mm -hmm. there are so many other drivers that I've met for other company or even people that I've met where their encounter with the client is nothing more than a business transaction. Mm -hmm. For me, it's building that personal relationship. There are so many people that you are taking them to chemo five days a week or taking them to radiation five days a week, dialysis, you know, three times a week. You really it, they become family. And I want someone that comes into this, that views these people as friends and family, you know, that wants to build that personal rapport with their clients. And um, I don't want my drivers just to sit there and listen to the radio and not have conversation with them. I want them to have that personal relationship. So that's really what I look for. I can definitely see how that can be very important. Um, where, where are you currently finding drivers? I mean, where are you even looking or putting ads or what are you doing to find these drivers? I've had the most luck on Indeed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, like, how are you able to vet them? You know, do they have like some kind of like online portfolio where they have like a rating system or how are you able to see? Like, um, right now, I just have where my applicants send their resume and then, you know, like most employers do, I go online and look at their social media and see what they're up to. Um, and then I just meet with them for an interview and it's really easy to feel someone out and see what their intentions are and how they're going to deal with a client. I love that. I love that. You see, you check out their social media, right? And is there key things that you look for? Cause I can, I can already see like, there's a key things that I will look for. Like if I was looking for like someone, you know, to drive for me, but like, what, what do you look for? If you look at the social media, what are you, what key things are you looking for? Um, I guess just more, Fam, I, I wouldn't say like family oriented, but they're, they're doing things with other people and, you know, not out partying super late. So they're not going to show <laughs> up to work and those kind of things, but just family oriented because they'll, there's a good chance they'll probably be the same way with our clients. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so how many vehicles do you currently own? I currently have five. Uh, and are they like, all, like, are they vans or are they sedans? Like, what are we looking I at? I have all vans. I have a mix of the transits and the caravans mm -hmm. right now with the fuel prices. I love my caravans, but don't get me wrong. I also love my transits because there's instances where you need to be able to put two people comfortably in a van. And I love my transits for that reason, because we have multiple patients that will leave an assisted living facility at one time to go to dialysis. And it's easy just to load them both in that van. The caravans, you can put two people in, but if they're too big or they have leg extenders on their wheelchairs, you're not able to put them in the caravan. So I love having a mix of both. Awesome. Awesome. I know we're, we're backtracking a little bit, um, but I don't, I don't, did we touch on like, uh, you were in university for the medical field, right? Before you even got into the EMT industry, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what was your undergrad degree? Because were you, were you in, first of all, were you undergrad or what were you before? Undergrad, yeah. Undergrad. I have a, so, I have a bachelor's in healthcare administration. So did that kind of like tr like the knowledge that you gained from that transcend into the EMT industry? Mm, 
I mean, I guess in certain aspects, like some of the law, because really my degree is a glorified business degree with a concentration in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So some of the marketing kind of goes into it because I did have to take some marketing classes. The accounting classes I took were huge in learning how to work QuickBooks. Um, Some of the law stuff was great when I was setting up my corporation, but I mean, otherwise everything I learned was just learned by doing. I see. I see. What about the network? Did you build any network? Like did any network kind of transcend into the, your business? Not necessarily because where I went to school was about three hours from where my business has been operated. So no, got really. it. Got it. Got it. Um, and uh, and uh, you you took well, how long did it take from ideas idea to actually getting your first client. Like when we when we talked privately, you were saying that it took a while, but can you kind of uh, kind of elaborate on one, how long did it take? And two, why did it take so long? So from idea to first client was probably 18 to 20 months, almost mm-hmm. two years. Mm-hmm. Um, this was for many reasons. Just, I wanted to make sure I had a solid business plan. I wanted to make sure it was going to be profitable. I wanted to make sure I was going to be able to get clients. And then also going through all the red tape to get onboarded with your brokers. That was not an easy process. Um, which to backtrack on that, just to get financing for any new business owner is like pulling teeth. It was Mm. horrible. I got denied so many times. You can't get a conventional loan from your bank or your credit union. Finally, I, someone recommended me to reach out to the state of Florida and I was able to get a business loan through our department of economic opportunity Mm -hmm. and the loan officer that I was working with, he had experience in NEMT. So it just worked out great. And he truly believed in my vision. So that made me feel really great about it, but the whole loan process took forever. And then I also started my company in the middle of COVID. So as you can imagine, that put a lot of delays on things. Um, I bought my vans from out of state and they took forever to get here. (laughs) So there were just so many things, but I wanted to make sure I did everything right. So it, it took a long time. You don't want to skip any corners. No, not at all. Awesome. 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 Yeah. Cause it seems like a very, like, I mean, this kind of industry specific, I mean, particularly because it just seems like a huge liability, right? Um, you know, transporting people was not an easy, you know, lean thing, you know? Um, and so it seems like you definitely want to have that knowledge and cover all the bases, you know, not skip any corners, um, just as, you know, not just, as, you know, protect yourself, but to protect, you know, your, your clientele also. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so I know you said you recently started your business, you started it, uh, in COVID. Um, so let's talk numbers. Um, what are you looking at annually in revenue? So this is my second year in business. My first year through COVID, I was actually impressed with how much I made during my first year. My first year, I was a little bit under a quarter million. Um, My second year, which I haven't finished my second year yet, but my second year, we're on track to be a little bit over half a million. And then next year, there's no reason I shouldn't be over 750,000. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how much, like how much is, um, how much comes from what percentage of your business comes from private pay versus brokers? Cause you say you were doing both. Yes. So a lot of people consider private pay to be your facilities and your out of pocket, but I broke mine down much further than that. So I actually have a 33% split across the board, which I love not having all my eggs in one basket Mm because there's so many companies that will just work with brokers. So I have 33% brokers, 33% is my facilities and my hospitals. And then 33% is self-pay where they pay me with cash or credit card every day. So I love the diversity of my clientele. Awesome. And I mean, it just, like you said, it just works out like by not putting all your eggs in one basket because I hear people they're always you know like have frustrations of like the waiting process and maybe like it takes a long time to get approved or get a you know an answer back from a broker or whatever it may be but having like a nice even spread it sounds like you don't have to rely on just one source no and I did start out with all broker work and I mean you work for 30 days and 
your claims get denied or that you don't get paid on time. And even with your hospitals, you're most of the time you're working that 30. So you're doing that work for 30 days and then you got to wait another 30 days to get paid. So everything slowly trickled in when I first got started. And I realized private pay is really where it is. And I would love to be up to 50% private pay next year, if not higher. Is that one of the goals that you have for yourself? Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'd love, to get, I'd love to get away from broker work. Awesome. You're killing it. You're killing yeah. it. That's awesome. Yeah. I love I love to hear it. I love to hear it. Um, and then the fact that you told me you started right after college is even more like crazy. It's like, wow. Like, it's just like you automatically knew like what you were going to do, you know? I think after me, after, after college, I was kind of lost for a long time. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I, I, was, I, I was definitely lost, especially that it was taking so long. So I did have another job that I was working until I really knew that this could a hundred percent supplement all income that I needed it to. So it's like, you didn't like, you didn't just like, like quit everything before you started your business. You had to make sure kind of ease into it. Right. I could not afford to quit, you know, being a pro college student, you cannot afford to quit with no income. So yeah, I, I was fortunate. I had a remote job that I was working. So really I could spend so much time focusing on getting the business rolling while having the opportunity to work remote. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I know this is a big issue for you because we, you know, we discussed this also before. Um, do you think that mental health is overlooked uh, well, mental health for the elderly is overlooked in this industry, um, for in, in the NEMT industry. Like, what do you think? Tremendously, tremendously. I personally have a grandpa who is in an assisted living facility, and then not only seeing the decline of his mental health while mm -hmm. he's been in there, but also all of my clients, and not even just the ones in facilities, but at home. I did not realize the amount of people that don't have family. They don't have friends. They decided to never have children. So they are by themselves. And especially when I started, they would tell me, you know, you're the only person I get to talk to. And they enjoy that 30 minutes that we get to spend every day. And them being by themselves, it takes a huge mental toll on them. So I am such an advocate of them getting out of their house and going out to dinner, or going to the beach or wherever they want to go. I am such an advocate for that. And I mean, being locked away during COVID was really hard on everybody because they weren't even going out to doctor's appointments. All the doctors were trying to do telemedicine. So COVID had a rough effect on their mental health, but even without COVID, being isolated is so detrimental to their mental health. So you know, I not only do medical transport, but anything they want to do. I have regulars who go to the restaurant or they go to the bar every week. They should be able to. Yeah, to do extra. No, for sure. I, I can definitely see seeing, I can definitely see uh, the social aspect being one of the leading reasons for a client to want to reschedule with a provider, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, by, you know, like we mentioned family prior, you know, we mentioned, you know, like uh, employees being like family, you know, drivers being like family and dispatchers being like family, um, but also the clientele being, you know, the, the riders being like family also. And to have that communication, you know, like, you know, when they come back from a, you know, maybe a not so good news appointment, or maybe it's, you know, like just having just a rough day, right? Um, tying that into, you know, the conversation with the providers, you know, like, and, you know, just being there just for them to talk to you, right? I can just definitely see that being a reason for them to want to spend more time with the providers, right? And, yes. you know, rebooking rides and stuff like that, right? They do. They love going on rides with us. And a lot of them will tell us, oh, if you got to pick up somebody else, you know, we just love riding with you. They love talking to people. And, you know, like you mentioned, if they get bad news in an appointment, I cannot tell you how many times we're I've just cried in the van with the patient, especially my cancer patients or, you know, it's, they really do become like family and their mental health is so huge, especially we're getting into the holiday season. And right now I'm not working weekends, but when we get into the holiday season, I do work weekends because their family will, if they're in a wheelchair, they bring them home for the, for the weekend or for Christmas celebrations, Thanksgiving, 
Um, there's a bunch of them that I even have that don't have family. So once I'm done with my family, I take to go boxes to my clients to make sure that they have someone there with them for the holidays or they have take to go boxes. What is that? Like, uh, what is that? Like, consider? like to go with food when I'm done with oh, my family go. celebration, I'll take them that's food. So, so they that's have so nice. Yeah. That's so nice. They, to do. they really do become family. I, I get my heart broken when I lose one, but they really do become family. Wow. Like that's that's so amazing like i can definitely yes. I, I mean me personally i'll be happy if somebody who's brought me to who's not happy with food come on yeah come on. yeah exactly <laughs> especially the people that don't have family to spend with on the holidays like it breaks my heart so yeah definitely understand so what could um other providers do to help clients with mental health like how can they help assist with that like is there um you know like is there like maybe other like other services that they provide such as like taking them to and from like uh uh uh, supermarkets or you know like to the park maybe for like a weekend um is there anything that they can do so there are certain providers like myself i'll take them anywhere they want to go because they ask if we only do medical transport but i'll take them anywhere that they're willing to go and i'm not sure about all insurance plans but there is one medicaid policy in the state of florida that gives all of their clients, I want to say it's between two and four, what they call social visits every month. Mm. So they can use these to go to church, to go to the grocery store, anywhere they want to go. And a lot of people don't know about that. So I always tell them if they have this policy, reach out and schedule your social visits, take advantage of it. I wish more insurance companies did have that. But if they don't, I'll also tell them, you know, our county bus service, they do offer for you to go out to the restaurants on the weekends or, um, you know, they can utilize us for it. But if they're not able to pay, there's lots of other services, nonprofits that offer that kind of thing. And they should take advantage of it. And really, it's just educating our clients on the things that are available because most of them are elderly and they don't utilize the internet and they only look at the newspaper so they're just not aware of everything that is available for them to find more information on that like what can they how can they find uh information with their insurance providers to see if they can even get that option i tell them just to call their insurance and reach out to them but i also make sure i'm educated on those options because a lot of times they reach out to us looking for that information so if i'm not able to help them with my services i want to be able to point them in the right direction of where they can get help. Awesome. Awesome. So we mentioned, okay, so the park, church, the supermarket, what other, what other places can you take uh, your clientele to, you know, help, you know, boost their morale? We've done to the beach, to the bar, to the casino. The casino is so popular. That is very popular. You're close to Hernando Beach, aren't you? Yes, Hernando Beach. Um, there's a lot of beach bars on Hernando Beach. So I have some regulars that go over there multiple times a week. Mm-hmm. Um, the casino is super popular. So right now we're working on doing one day a month where we take everybody to the casino because mm-hmm. we have a lot of them that love to go drink and gamble. Um, museums, I mean, anywhere that they want to go, their heart desires will take them there. Wow, it sounds even great for like, you know, any indie provider. Oh, like, yeah. Like, oh, today we're going to a museum. <laughs> yeah, my, my employees are so stoked for the casino trip. They're so excited. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so um, we, we mentioned, uh, you know, like you have very high, you know, standards for your any you know, company, which is definitely understandable. Um, you know, when finding, you know, employees, you know, how can you ensure or like pass down your values to your team to make sure they provide the same level, stand, you know, like the same standard that you hold yourself to? All of my employees know my story. They know mm-hmm. why I'm in this business. They know that I am looking to not only make sure that everybody gets to their appointments, but that we build that rapport with them and and when it goes back to the hiring process too, is I look for people that already want to have that relationship, that they're in the business for the right reasons. Because I can't tell you how many times my clients have told us that they've rode with another provider and the provider just gets in the van, doesn't talk to them, turns up the radio. So I'm, I will also jump in the van with my employees every now and then, and, you know, I'll ride with them and see how they interact with the employees or, or with the clients and, you know, if they could do something different or, you know, they can go 
above and beyond to make sure that when they get inside the doctor's office, we don't just roll them in there, but we also make sure they get signed in or if they need to get some extra help to get in their house, we'll do that. And I want to make sure that my employees truly care about them. So I think, I mean, I've really been fortunate. I have great people. I've had everyone that's worked for me has been wonderful. They go above and beyond to help everybody. But I think just being open and raw with them and telling them how much this business means to me, I really have lucked out with having people who have the same vision. You know, when scaling, right, of course, it's going to become more difficult, right? I mean, this is natural. Um, So what incentive would you have for drivers to go above and beyond, right? I mean, do you, don't you think that's important to have like some kind of incentive for them? Yes, I do. And that's something I ask all of my drivers, what motivates you? Because Mm -hmm. there's been so many places I have worked out where it's just a pizza party and none of us want pizza. So I want to know, and I also have that relationship with my drivers where I know what motivates them, whether it be an extra day off or it be a bonus or, you know, I want to know what works for them or if it's just going with them, making sure they have lunch Mm. or if I run in the gas station and they need something, it's just whatever they need. What's going to make their life easier? What motivates them? Check this out, Marina. What do you think of this idea? Uh, So what if each rider got rated at the end of their trips, right? And the one Mm -hmm. with like, I don't know, like let's say if it was stars or whatever, the one with the most stars or whatever, the most requests, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever they said their their incentive is, right? Whether it's candy, whether it's a day off, whatever it would Mm -hmm. be, right? The person with the most stars, they get to, you know, get that that incentive, you know, that incentive, the thing that they wanted the most, right? They Mm -hmm. get that day off, they get that candy bar, they get that pizza to themselves, right? Like, they, yeah. they, they earned that because they got the most and that and that makes them want to compete with each other to like yes. ride that top tier service what do you think so I have tried to do stuff like that I actually worked for Enterprise Rent-A-Car before I did this as well and they were huge on doing those kind of things so I tried to implement some of that into the business where hey let's do some gift cards compete for each other get your clients to leave us reviews um have them send me emails to compliment you these kind of things but it just no one ever not everyone wanted to participate so i think it came down to not everyone wanted to work a little bit extra for that um the gift card or the day off because everybody really does have different things that motivate them so i did try to do stuff like that but the competition was just not there I see. I see. You know, I can definitely understand. Some people are just kind of like, you know what? I'm not trying to, <laughs> not trying yeah, to rock the boat with anyone. I was so disappointed because I'm like, <laughs> I am so competitive. I was like, oh, I'd be beating all of y'all, but no, <laughs> the competition was not there. I tried. I see. I see. I mean, it could be probably maybe like gamified in the sense of like, maybe just even like showing up on time, the person that has the most, you know how like they say like employee of the month and some people like, they don't miss one day of work, right? They get like a star or whatever. Maybe it's something like that. I don't know. Um, but I can definitely understand everybody doesn't want to participate. Everybody doesn't want to go above me on, right? Like I yeah. can, unfortunately, I can definitely understand that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's go over some more questions. You ready? Yep. Uh, so these are some more comment questions uh, from the viewers. Uh, let's see here. Let me bring it up. Okay. So we have another one from Marvelously Made. Um, one of their questions is, Um, What mistakes have you made and how did you correct or learn from your mistakes? My biggest mistake was underestimating the amount of working capital I needed to have when I started. Uh, So this piggybacks on where I said your facilities and your brokers, you know, some of them pay you on net 10, net 30, net 60, net 90, whatever. So I underestimated majorly how much I needed to have just because vehicles are breaking down your fuel especially when your fuel prices go up um you know got to make sure you're continuing to make sure that insurance payments made every month paying your employees make sure that you have enough working capital and I know there are so many people who are trying to come into this industry and do things the cheap way out but this is not that kind of business you have to have money to start this business that was definitely my biggest mistake Definitely understand. Definitely understand. Um, Okay, so we have another question from Eva Thorne. Um, She says, hey, this is a great interview. I'm from North Carolina um, as well. 
um, and currently trying to start a, a, um, a private pay with an EMT or a non-emergency transportation. Um, she says a few questions she has is, um, um, what is like a good, like, uh, what's a good base rate? Um, so like, like 30, $30 for, you know, zero to, you know, five miles or zero to 10 miles. Like, what is a good base rate pay? Uh, if you were to like, you know, throw, throw one out there at least. Okay. So for me, this is going to vary depending on where you are. Obviously like California's rates are going to be very different than, you know, the middle of Kentucky or something. So what I did is I, what I call phone shop, I reached out to local competitors. Hey, my, my grandma needs a ride from here to here. What are you charging? So that's a good way to figure out what your local competitors are charging. But personally, um, I know I'm a little bit more expensive than my competition, but I also provide a better service than my competition. So my current rates are a $45 load fee each way, and that includes five miles. So for a round trip, it's $90, but it includes 10 miles. My competition does not include that mileage. Um, and there, I think their uh, load fee is like $35, but you got to break it down where if theirs is $35 and they're charging $350 a mile, what is that come out to at 10 miles? So you just got to figure out whatever works for you. And for me, people look for a deal. So whenever they hear, oh, $45 or $90 for the round trip, and it includes 10 miles, it seems like a deal because it's not, oh, it's $90 plus your $350 a mile. So people are looking for a bargain and that's a good way to make it seem like it's a bargain. Awesome. Okay. Um, so we have one more question and this is also from Eva Thorne. Um, she asked, what kind of plates should you have for your vehicles? So this is a good question because there are so many people who are coming into this industry trying to cut corners. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that you're going to have to reach out not only to your state, but also to your county and your city to figure out what you need. Um, here in Florida, we're pretty lenient on what we need to have for our vehicles and specifically the county I'm in, I don't even have to have an occupational license. So this is going to vary. The best thing you can do is send a letter to or call your local um, government authorities, your clerk of court, whatever you need to do, give them a call and figure out what you need to operate your business in that area. Because like I said, it's going to differ by state county, city, some places you need to have all three. You need to have a state license, a county license, and a city license. Right here where I am, super lenient, which is not always a good thing because then you have, you know, everyone coming in and undercutting everyone and not providing quality service, but definitely reach out to your local government and figure out which. Awesome. Awesome. Great feedback. Great feedback. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what does the future of Crown Care Transport look like? Um, are you thinking of expanding? Um, I know you mentioned, you know, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to hit seven, 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 a hundred K. Um, yes. but yeah, are you, are you expanding uh, the area? Are you hiring more? What does the future look like? This is a great question because it depends on the day. There are some days where I am so stressed <laughs> out where I'm like, I don't know if I can handle anymore, but then there are some days that go really well where my goal, I think depend on my stress levels is going to be 10 vans by the end of next year. And if I have 10 vans, um, I mean, our, our revenue should be well over a million dollars. So that is my long-term goal for the end of next year. But I mean, this business is so stressful and there are some days where I just think to myself, the more vans, the more, the more stress, the more troubles, but we definitely want to continue to grow. I want to continue to hire quality, compassionate employees, and I want to help as many people as possible. Awesome. Um, do you offer any kind of like, I mean, well, are you currently well, one hiring? Do you offer any consultant, you know, consultant uh, like services? Or... I am hiring. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I'm always looking for drivers. I think I will always be hiring. Where can um, I go to apply? 
you can go onto my website, crowncaretransport.com to apply. Okay, awesome. I'll put a link yes. in the, the, the description of the video too. Of that. Awesome. Or email me your resume. Mm -hmm. um, I have actually had so many people reach out to me about consulting or a course or a pamphlet or a brochure, wherever they can find information. And I know a couple other providers would do this, but I always welcome everybody to come spend a day, two days a week, hang out with me see how I operate my company. Like a shadow. Um, oh, I like that. I, I appreciate having the extra hand and you will get the best knowledge that you could possibly get. You can't learn this stuff in a course. You can't learn it, you know, on someone's ebook. Getting out there and doing is the best way to learn. So I invite anyone to do that. But I also know that not everyone can take time off of work and, you know, drive over here or fly over here or whatever they want to do. So I've had so many people reach out and ask for a course. So I am in the process of developing one that will be, you'll be able to find it on my website probably by the end of the month. Um, so that will be there for everybody. But I really invite you to reach out to, if not me, then some of your local providers and see if they're willing to lend a helping hand to have you shadow them. I know there's a couple other providers that I've networked with um, on Facebook and they also you know, encourage other people that are thinking about starting a business to come ride with them. That is the best way to learn is get out there That's and see if awesome. anyone's willing to like, help you. Like a ride along kind of thing. Absolutely. And like really like sit in that, that owner, that, 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 that provider, that, you know, that owner kind of like seat and kind of learn firsthand. Yes. That's, That's the best amazing. way to learn. Because every every day is going to be different. There's just stuff that you can't learn from a book or a course. And that's the best way to learn. And I'm not at all threatened by someone coming in and starting a company because there really is enough business to go around. Our now, elderly is one of the be, largest markets. Would that cost or that, would that be a free kind of thing you got no, going on? No, I appreciate the extra hand. So having someone else, you can come help me, ride with me, see what I do on a daily basis and jump in there. Gets me a little bit of help and it gets you exposure. So And they would, they would go to your website. They would just send you a an email yeah send me an email. email give me a call let's figure something out absolutely awesome 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 yeah. what about events do you have events going on i uh i seen on your um on your uh your your page because you know i kind of like i snoop around a little bit I, yeah. i'm always on the internet so like um so i seen you have like an, a a groups page like what is that can you tell me more about that a groups page yeah you have groups i don't know if it's like something that you kind of like was like toying with a little bit but it's like a um it's like a, it says a thing where it says groups. Um, maybe it's a mistake. We can we can talk about it later. Okay. <laughs> but it's, like, it's a group page. It's a group from there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Interesting. Is that on my website? <laughs> yes, it's on your website. You have a okay. group. Okay, <laughs> that's probably an error. <laughs> All right, so it's just like so, I'll have to look into that. <laughs> so where can uh, where can people connect with you, Marina? The best way, Facebook, um, my company has a Facebook, you can find us on there, Crown Care Transport, send me a message, reach out, reach out to me by email. That's the best way to get a hold of me because my phone doesn't stop ringing all day long. So email, Facebook, that's the best way to find me and I'm happy to help anybody. Mm, uh, so why not like, why not Instagram? Why not TikTok? Why not all these other you know, I, I do have an Instagram. Actually, you and I talked about this and I was like, hmm, I wonder if my Instagram is still alive. And it is. I did find my Instagram. So I do have an Instagram and I've actually thought about doing a TikTok. So I'm pretty sure that that's something I'm going to um, get in the works for because I've even seen a couple other providers and the girls that you interviewed before. I know they have a TikTok and some of their TikToks are so funny. So I think I'm going to join the TikTok community. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward yes. to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, do you have anything else you want to share with everyone? Um, I think as a closing message, the best thing I could say is don't get discouraged. This is a hard business mentally, emotionally, physical, it really takes a toll on you. But if you are passionate about it and you're in this for the right reasons, it can pay off tenfold. Just keep, just keep pushing. Awesome. Awesome. You guys, Marina is so amazing. So amazing. <laughs> so insightful. I, you know, like every interview that, that I go through, you know, I've learned so much and, uh, and I just feel like every, every interview I come out like a different person, you know, about just the amount of knowledge that I take in and, uh, 
this has for sure been one of those that like I just kind of took in so much. So I appreciate the opportunity to get down and you know take the time to you know that you took the time to sit down with me, you know, discuss E and T, you know, topics with me. Um, and uh, hopefully we can have this conversation again um, and, and talk some more. Um, and uh, and I want to appreciate and I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Um, and uh, yeah, like uh, I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.